What's going on guys? It's Drory here with Good News Goods. It's been forever for a uh, video, which is no surprise there. I keep saying I'll make them, but I don't. Uh, but I do got one this time, and then I botched the audio, so I had to make a new intro, which I'm doing right now instead of me standing there. And basically this video is because I'm going to show you guys how to fix an original NES Nintendo. Uh, it's a super common problem and it's a free fix and nine times out of ten it's usually what's wrong with these things so I never pass them up I paid five dollars a piece for these and I got eight of them so a total of forty dollars spent and we'll see if we can get them all to work or not so yeah this is gonna be a pretty straightforward video you're not gonna need a lot of tools to do this if you do have a broken NES at home you're gonna need a pot some boiling water uh, Phillips screwdriver you know, some cleaning cloths, maybe some metal polish, and rubbing alcohol, which I will get into when we start opening these consoles up and cleaning them. So I'll get a console in front of us, we'll get it turned upside down, and we'll get it ready for disassembly. Also, it's a good idea to keep a spare cup to keep screws in. I've lost them before. Not a good thing. Alright, so, this is pretty basic. You have a couple screws on the bottom you're going to want to take off. Uh, there's three on the front and then three on the back side and it's just a regular Phillips and that's about it you got your one two three four five and six so you just want to take these off to start and uh, sometimes they stay stuck in there this is where a magnetic screwdriver can come in handy but if you're careful you can just turn the console over and uh, scoop the screws up put them in a bucket or a little cup or whatever you have to hold them Now that all the screws are out, it should just lift off like so. As you can see, one of them kind of stuck in there, so sometimes you got to push them out. I usually try to do it over top of the top of the NES tray, and the screws can sometimes fall in there. There's the NES tray. It'll need a bit of a clean. It has some yellowing on the front. You can fix that with uh, Salon Care 40 or hydrogen peroxide. If you guys ever want to see a video on that, let me know. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do is take this heat shield off. Uh, there's not going to be too many screws around it. You got two here, you got one there, and you got two more on the back side here, and then another two on the far side. So we'll just zip through these quick, and then you're going to want to loosen the board off underneath, and I will show you how to take the latch off. Now that the heat shield is removed, we have access to the uh, flap here, whatever you want to call it, the cartridge insert. Basically, the cart goes in there and it pushes down and latches, and that pushes the cart teeth to the uh, 72 pin connector. You can see here, I'll slide it in. There's where it grabs as you push it in, then you push it down and it latches. Now, this thing is held on by six screws. There's two in the back and well, I guess there's four in the back, two on each side, and two in the front side. Now, the stainless screws are longer. Every screw in this NES is the exact same size, except for the two stainless screws. They're the only two different size screws in this console, also making it pretty easy to work on. And then when you reinstall these two after you take these screws out, 
you're gonna wanna make sure there's a little flap underneath which I'll show you when we reinstall you're gonna wanna make sure you slide that back onto the motherboard or PCB itself otherwise when you try to push a cart down it doesn't stay down it just springs back up There you can see the uh, size difference in the screws there and this flap is ready to slide forward a bit to get the latch underneath to clear the PCB and then you slide it off so right down in there that connects to the PCB so you just push it forward slightly and then usually you can pull it right up like that and you just wiggle it past the 72 pin connector sometimes it can fight you just be patient with it and there it goes and that's your 72 pin connector that's what reads the games and sends all the data to the motherboard and the processor and everything so it can display a image on your tv now you do want to loosen this off right here and then there's another screw right here that is the rf and the video output uh, basically it just lets the motherboard travel a bit more you don't have to take these screws all the way out just halfway so you have a bit of play with the motherboard and then you can just lift it up a bit and then you just slowly slide this 72 pin connector off the bottom of the teeth. I just kind of work it back and forth and then eventually it breaks loose. They can hold on pretty tight. And there you go. And now that is ready to be thrown into a pot of boiling water. Another tip too is you, after boiling these, you're going to want to clean them with a cart and some alcohol. Because when you boil these for whatever reason, it leaves some residue all over everything also top the longer part that I'm pointing there to that's where the cart goes in shorter part is for the bottom you can't really mess it up if you try and put it the wrong way it just doesn't fit you just want the bottom where the screw holes are to be flush with the screw holes and you're good to go now while the 72 pin connector is off you're gonna want to take a little bit of metal polish or rubbing alcohol and a q-tip and just run it back and forth on these teeth just to clean them up and make sure you have a good connection. These don't normally corrode and it actually looks like somebody's maybe cleaned this and almost sanded it. You can see it on the motherboard. So this one might be no good regardless. We'll find out what happens. It felt kind of tight when I put a cartridge in which tells me the pin connectors were probably replaced with a cheap Chinese one. Which you don't want to do because they're prone to failure and they never work when you do the boil trick. I only say buy one of those if, you know, all else fails and you just need a new pin connector, but if, if you can't save the old one. So these are about ready to go in a pot of boiling water. What you're going to want to do is obviously bring a pot of water to boil, and then you're just going to want to toss these things in. I boil them for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then I clean the residue off them because, like I said, boiling these leaves some residue. And then I leave them overnight to dry before reinstalling them. But while these boil, let's clean some NES lids. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to be using is Autoglim Fast Glass. I like using window cleaner because it's not too harsh and it dries quick. So I'm basically just going to spray some glass cleaner on it, get it a little damp, and grab a medium bristled scrub brush and go nuts at it. This will just get all the loose dirt and grime and smokers residue and whatever else is on this case off. This is one of the dirtiest of uh, the eight cases I got. This top could be whitened, like I said, with a retro bright trick. But I'm going to be selling these consoles on eBay for, you know, basically 25 30 bucks. So I'm not going to take the time to Mr. Clean Magic Eraser the scuffs or to really brighten them. Uh, the ones that are brighter, if I do have some spare controllers, power cords, video cables, I will put those with them. So it's, you know, more valuable of a lot. I'll sell them for normally $75 at the Antique Mall. I'll usually include a basic game with them. 
Next thing I'll be using is the Meguiar's Plastax. You guys have seen me use this in lots of previous videos, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I guess. Uh, it's just a nice plastic cleaner. It takes off mild scuff scrapes and little scratches, especially on the black on these Nintendos, the little strip there, it really cleans them up. You just basically go nuts and rub away at it. It doesn't really leave much residue when it's wiped up. Um, you know, it, it does work on scuffs. I don't think it's going to do a ton for, for some of these scuffs. We'll see, especially this one because it is a permanent marker scuff. Like I said, you could use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, but we'll go ahead and wax this whole case up. Now that all the uh, wax is off, I'll clean this up with some Chemical Guides VRP plastic and vinyl dressing. Basically, you put a glob on, this is where I'll use that little round polishing pad, and I just polish it out on this thing, and then I wipe off the residue. It doesn't leave any grease, so no dust sticks to it, and it gives it just like a, a nice shine, and it protects it from UV light, which essentially is what yellows these things in the first place, so it'll just help prevent it from yellowing more. Uh, it's not a bad thing to put on your consoles. <laughs> And now comes time to clean this board up. I'll show you guys how to clean up these connections on this board. The same way essentially applies for, well, really any cart, an NES cart, SNES cart, Sega Genesis cart, it really doesn't matter. Now, if the circuit board's a little dirty, you can use vinegar if it's a little bit corroded, or rubbing alcohol and a very light scrub brush or a toothbrush, and you can clean the circuit board up that way. You're just going to want to, you know, rinse off uh, the vinegar with rubbing alcohol if you do do that. This one's a little dusty, but it's not too bad. You know, I'll take a little air gun to it, blow it out, and then uh, we'll clean these teeth up here. All right, now to clean these teeth, this is where you're going to want some rubbing alcohol, and some metal polish. We're gonna use a Q-tip and just run them up and down these teeth or fingers, connectors, whatever you guys wanna call them. They're called different things. Now you don't need a lot of metal polish, but you watch how dark this Q-tip gets after just a little bit of rubbing back and forth on this top metal here. These didn't even look that corroded and it'll still pull so much blackness off there and corrosion. And there you go, you can kind of already see it building up on the Q-tip. So I'll I'll usually do like two to three Q-tips per side to give you guys an idea. Or I'll use a microfiber cloth. Well, now it is time for reassembly, which is pretty easy. It's essentially just the deconstruction, but in reverse. Uh, the main thing you want to make sure you do is when we put the main uh, cartridge insert back on is one, you get the pin connector the right way. As we discussed, you want the shorter side down so that the screw holes are flush with the motherboard. And then when we put the actual slot for the cartridge to slide in and push down on, you want to make sure that the flap underneath grabs the front part of the motherboard there. But first we'll just slide this thing on, just like taking it off. You can lift the motherboard up a little bit. And it does take a little bit of pressure and tinkering to get it on. Uh, it does grab pretty tight. As you can see, you just kind of push it from the back, slide it on, and you'll hear it kind of go all the way to bottom out. And there it is attached. And now next is just putting the top piece on. Before I put the top lid on, I always test it just to make sure it's still working. You know, I still got the heat shield to put on as well, but we'll give it a little click down, hit the power. Oh, we got a flashing light. This could be because it leaves a bit of residue. Um, basically, you can want to slide the card in and out a few times. And there we go. We got Mario Brothers firing up. Tried a few more times here, and it works again. And this was one that did not work at all originally. 
I'll, I'll turn it off and on a few times, play through it for a second. Sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, check with a second or third game. Make sure the games you're using are clean too, because out of these eight consoles, four did work. Likely because the seller was using a dirty cart to test them. I've seen it happen time and time again. So clean the cart up first, see if that works, and then uh, go from there. But as you can see, this is number one working. So I'll go through and test the rest of them uh, basically the exact same way. Then I'll install the heat shields and I'll put the tops back on them and I'll get them listed. Well, here they are, all done. Yes, some of them could have used some retro brighting, but they've been cleaned up for the most part. The bottoms of some of them still need to wipe down, but they're all now working. So a $40 investment, I should do all right. Uh, they actually they all work except for one, and it was the one that I thought had the, you know, replacement pin connector. So unfortunately, I am going to have to order a replacement pin connector for that one. But the other seven completely working. I uh, should do pretty good. I'll probably at least two of them I can put controllers and cables too and i'll put them in the antique mall for uh, 60 to 75 canadian a piece and the rest i will put up on ebay for 25 dollars maybe 30 a piece with best offer at the lowest acceptance of 25 plus shipping so i should do all right on my investment don't ever be scared of broken electronics sometimes they're fun to work with especially these old nintendos they're uh something that's real easy to dip your feet in and try out like i said nine times out of ten it's the, always the pin connectors. It's an easy fix. I recommend trying it out, especially if you can get these things for like $5. Even at $5 a piece, you can turn around and sell these broken as is and still make some money. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Sorry for my hiatus. Hopefully I'll keep getting videos out. I have a few more console repair videos to do and... Uh, that's, that's about it for the, the foreseeable future. I got a how to take apart a Genesis and fix it, an Atari 2600, few Commodores, and a monitor. If you guys do want to see more of that retro bright stuff, or if you guys have never seen that before, let me know in the comments down below, and I can show you guys how to brighten up yellowed and dirty plastic. It's uh, pretty easy. It's just some chemicals, and it takes a day or two in the sun or a UV light. As always, though, guys, thanks for watching. If you're not already, hit the like and subscribe for more. See you in the next video, hopefully sooner than later.